The next version of the Linux kernel is supposed to be coming this Sunday, January 19th. Well, a bug was found just a couple of days ago, and that could cause some issues with that plan. It turns out that an engineer at Microsoft added some code to the kernel that is making a bit of a mess. Hi, I'm Michael, and I make videos about open source software and Linux, so subscribe for more. A couple of months ago, the merge window for Linux 6.13 saw a really interesting and very useful improvement to the kernel modules, which was contributed by a Microsoft engineer. Not only was this interesting, some people said that it, this would be the biggest highlight for the kernel modules in this release. The code was for using large read-only execute pages, or ROCKS pages, for allocations and caching. This would reduce the instruction TLB pressure and has the potential of improving performance. Unfortunately, there were some issues caused by this change, and, well, it had to be patched. Peter Zilstra of Intel submitted a patch saying, and I quote, the whole module writable address nonsense made a giant mess of alternative.c. Not to mention it still contains bugs, notably some of the CFI variants crash and burn. For those unfamiliar, CFI stands for Control Flow Integrity, and CFI is an anti-malware tech aimed at preventing attackers from redirecting the control flow of a program. So obviously, having issues with this anti-malware stuff is not great. Now, this bug doesn't affect all systems, but it does cause issues on some CFI-enabled setups, including reports of machines powered by Intel's Alder Lake failing to resume from hibernation. I know a lot of people are going to take this opportunity to yell at Microsoft for this. And let's face it, Microsoft is not known for having the highest or the utmost standards for quality control. I mean, after all, they do make Windows. But sometimes things happen, especially when you're working on a very complex project. Sometimes things just don't go as planned. The Microsoft engineer who submitted the changes has been doing Linux kernel development since at least 2006, well before starting at Microsoft, so this is not a knock on him either. In fact, he's been working on patches to clean it all up. Zilstra said, but given the current state of things, this just isn't ready. And he says that they're going to be disabling it for now, but they'll try again in the next cycle. So that means the code is still going to be in the kernel source, but it's not going to be actually included in the stable kernel build. It's a shame because this would provide some significant performance benefits, but hopefully we'll get those in 6.14 once this is taken care of. There's another oddity with this though. AMD engineer Borislav Petkov noted that the Linux x86-64 maintainers had not signed off on the change, which is a bit weird. How did it even get in if no one signed off on it? There is a discussion to be had about disabling the code versus reverting the code, but I think the more important discussion would be to figure out how it got in without anyone giving an ACK. Oh yeah, for those who don't know, ACK means acknowledgement, which is just a way of saying you sign off on some code, which when I first heard this said by someone, I was very confused. The discussion was normal dev talk up until this point, and then all of a sudden, one of them said, hey, can you ACK me? And I was like, wait, what? ACK me? Did you say hack me? Or ACK me like in the fake company thing? And then they explained it. Still pretty weird. <laughs> Now, this is why open source development, especially development on the Linux kernel, is so fascinating to me. Not the ACK stuff. That's not relevant. This, this news sounds terrible. And I already saw some people throw shade at Microsoft for it, but at the same time, it's also an example of why open source is great. Because you can see all the people from various companies working together to find and solve issues. I mean, this could have been a mess. But it was found and addressed before release, so it's basically a nothing burger. But on the flip side of that nothing burger, the openness of this, you know, it kind of brings limelight to the uh, issues in this case where proprietary development, no one have ever heard anything about this happening. But at the same time, you can argue that if it wasn't for openness, no one would have found the issue and been able to address it as fast as it was. So that's why I think this stuff is so interesting to me because there's pros and cons to talk about the proprietary and the openness of development. And uh, overall, I think clearly the open source solution is better because not having the ability to find it and then fix it would be way worse, in my opinion. Anyway, it's basically a nothing burger and I hope it's all addressed for 614 because the performance improvements are quite promising. And there's still a lot of stuff to look forward to with the 613 release. I'll be covering that in the next episode of This Week in Linux. If you haven't subscribed, then do that now because it's one of the best Linux shows ever made. And just because I happen to be the researcher, writer, host, editor, and well, creator of the show, that doesn't mean I'm biased. You'll like it.
In fact, you don't have to wait for the next episode. Here's a playlist right here. You can check out all the latest episodes of This Week in Linux. So if you're new to my content, don't wait. Jump on that twill ride. And you too can become a twiller.